Hi guys, I'm Michelle. I'm Joey. And we're from UBC's Digital Tattoo Project. And today we're going to be talking to you about clickjacking. So we're going to start out by defining what is clickjacking, what are some prime examples of it, and what can you do to avoid it? So a clickjack is an attack where an, the attacker will try to hijack your click or maybe some information you've typed in using an invisible frame, so like an invisible like button maybe over the play of your video. Mm -hmm. um, it could be just a text box that's been overlaid perfectly with your email password or banking password text box. So that's where it gets dangerous. Um, the like and share that often will result is a, a shame, but I think the most important thing is you know your personal information stays, stays safe. But that's how that works. So anyone who spent any amount of time on the internet has probably encountered clickjacking at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so what are the most recognizable, easily avoidable traps um, that you can see? Um, a really common thing on Facebook is that you'll notice these really short videos being liked and shared by a lot of your friends mm -hmm. that often have these very catchy titles that you want to click on. Um, however, when you do click on it, it will direct you to another site and then it will share the link to the video onto your timeline without you actually authorizing mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Um, so that's a nuisance, and it's really not very. Um, it's not you don't want to be sharing you content yeah, you that you're not authorizing that. Especially share. if you, if you know you, you may not even see it. You don't want to be. You don't want to have all this stuff out there attached to your Facebook profile that you don't support or you know aren't even aware of. Mm -hmm. So another really common example is the sidebars of sites will oftentimes have ads promising, you know, click this and win a free iPod mm -hmm. or make $5,000 a month from home. Mm -hmm. um, and these are very deceiving ads. And when you click on them, they'll actually direct you to another site that oftentimes has absolutely no connection to what you originally thought that's you were true. clicking on. Yeah. Um, so that's another really common example of clickjacking that you can recognize um, pretty. pretty fast. Yeah. Online, so Joey, what is a good example um, of some practices that you can do to avoid this kind of thing? I mean, as a user, there's not as you can't do as much to directly sort of attack uh, clickjack as you could if you were running the website and had control over what can be run. Uh, you can get an add-on called NoScript that will allow you to block this sort of thing in, on a case-by-case -case basis. You mm -hmm. can sometimes prevent the, the script from being executed, and that'll save you. Um, a bigger, like another good thing to do, this is just good practice in general, is to check the, the URL bar above your, your browser and, you know, like the Google Chrome has the search and URL all in one. And um, if you see HTTPS, which is, the, it'll pop up as green, that is generally secure and it's hard to get that certification if you don't have, you know, a secure site. Um, so that's really handy. The, I think the best thing to do is to stay vigilant and to be, you know, aware of what you're clicking on. Um, just be aware that this is a thing that can happen to you and try to avoid sketchy websites. Like that's probably the single best way to do it is just to you know practice safe browsing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we hope you guys have found this informative and until next time. Thanks a lot.